I'm your host, Gia Nurtas. Today, our guest is Timothy Chalamet. Hi, Timothy. I've watched your movie, The Beautiful Boy, and um, I have to say that I left theater with this sinking feeling. I'm a parent myself. No one is perfect. Every parent makes a mistake. Even if they have the best intentions and lots of love for their children. The question that was on my mind afterwards, to your judgment, what happened? Because in uh, the core of every addiction, there's some sort of a tr- a trauma. Mm. You know what I mean? So what do you think has happened in that loving family? Um, uh, I think there's like a universal relatability that the film hopefully gets at. And I think, like you said, you're a parent, and I think it's the experience of a lot of parents seeing this movie, but also likewise of um, people that are the age of Nick in the addiction, that um, that this is a recognizable force in, like, in the world right now, but especially in this country. So I think that's actually an active choice by Felix and Luke Davies, and I obviously can't speak to it too much because I didn't write it, but uh, in their adaptation of the books that it didn't tackle the why in as much as um, the fact that it was, and that was their reality, and not in a generalized sense. That, um, I think their hope was uh, that, again, not in a general way, but that it would be almost, um, it wouldn't be condemning in some way to say this is why he was addicted, or this is what was unique to his experience, which would maybe take an audience member out of it, or which is kind of not the point, which is not, I think, the intention of the movie. We, we, I don't think we wanted anyone to go oh, well, there's addiction having a recognizable face or some sort of theme that um, uh, would, be, would, would allow an audience member to separate it from themselves. I think that's the hope of the movie, is that it illuminates this disease doesn't discriminate. It, it has no preferred race, class, or gender. Um, it's all affecting. And to think it only affects others is wrong. It's counterintuitive, it's counterintuitive to the greater conversation at large. And, um, and it's just not true. <laughs> I thought it was very interesting. I mean, obviously it's based on the book that was written by the father. So the story is told through his point of view, mm-hmm. through kind of his lens. But if the story was told through Nick's point of view, what would have been told differently, you think? Hmm, I'm not sure. That's a really great question. Um, I'm not sure. I uh, We just did a Q&A with Luke Davies, who's the writer, and Felix, uh, the director. And I thought it was very interesting, the quote like uh, Luke used is, a book is like a 20-hour expedition, like when you read a book, let's say generally here here or there, and a movie is a two-hour expedition, let's say here or there. So in adapting a book, you're, you know, cutting that two hours down into a presentable two-hour thing, and uh, and when you have two books, it's 40 hours worth of stuff. So um, that's a long way of saying, like, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know what would be different, but I know they, like you said, it was, it was more uh, important to them to see it from David's perspective. The title is literally David's memoir as well. And ultimately for an audience member, not only for the audience members that are family members or sons themselves or daughters themselves or parents, um, but just, again, across, uh, across the board, it, it, uh, it made more sense that way to, um, to, uh, to have it like that. Yeah. Mm. I really love how, I mean, I've watched all, well, not all, but like at least the most important movies that he's been in. Yeah. And um, I love the combination of being completely fierce, brave about the character, but at the same time, you're very vulnerable. Mm. You're so open, and I really do appreciate that. Mm. We live in a society today that is basically like super stressful when each one of us has a set of addictions whether that's an addiction to an alcohol, drugs, tobacco, or a cup of coffee, or something like that. So I guess like everyone who watches the movie would actually be relating to it in some sort of way. I was, I kept analyzing myself and my own life, Mm. kind of examining that. So how, how did you find that courage how did you find the, the, how did you prepare for that role? Oh um, my, I, I, um, I don't know, maybe it's like too, like simple or something to, to point to the drama school I went to, but that's just like how uh, my whole class um, was taught is uh, just to, uh, I think if you value like the idea of being 
employed and that that's like an honor to be able to like sustain yourself as an artist period not just actors like I think inherently like you got to really give it your all so um thank you for saying that and um and uh like I said I think it's responsibility especially we in this movie um we're playing real people so I mean this was a uh a uh, very intimate experience that uh, they went through, so it felt important, like to, like I said, give it, give it everything. Yeah. Did you actually, uh, in preparation or work, did you did you talk to Nick Chef or mm -hmm. maybe like spend time with him or something? Yeah, I spent. Um, I think I had uh, I had lunch with Nick and Daisy, who's also the younger stepsister in the film, um, before we started, and uh, I know Steve similarly had uh, meals with David in real life. Um, and, uh, it was, it was, the, the thing is that the books are so detailed in the experience of what they went through that, uh, um, those were like a roadmap of sorts already, but it was good to actually meet them because, uh, um, I don't know, you just get a sense of like the humanity of their story and, and, uh, that they weren't like living, that they, that, that, that was their experience. They weren't living some sort of depiction like that was what they went through. Was there anything that was like maybe personal to you, like some some someone that you've maybe observed and seen? That I think it's of? I think like I think almost everyone knows someone at this point that has uh, gone through a version of this. Um, I think it's certainly true, just the fact that I'm 22 years old that I've known people that have gone through this. So. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen it with methamphetamine or to the intensity that's in the movie or in the books, but um, yeah, like I said, I think everyone, I, yeah, I think everyone has. Well, uh, besides the obvious objective, the movie actually really does uh, pour light on the issue mm -hmm. and it makes you really think and wonder and worry. Um, do you think there's another maybe deeper message that the movie brings? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's redemption. Um, I really like that question. I think it's hope. Um, I think it's like a light of sorts. Um, and not to make it a, a pressure cooker or anything, but it's it's exemplified in Nick, um, in Nick and David's relationship today. Um, like your first uh, question, like as it alludes to the why of it, it um, or why of Nick's addiction, I like the I don't know, I just, I, I'm really heartened by the fact that David has been such an active part of um, him getting better. Um, and I think the movie delves into that in many ways, like what that line is and what are the boundaries and, and, and realities of loving someone who's going through an addiction and how much you can actually or not actually help them. And sometimes it's counterintuitive. Like for example, when he actively says no to his son in order for the son to stop doing what he's doing and kind of wake yeah. up. Why, why do you think he actually, uh, David, and that is something I'm truly wondering about, kind of haven't decided for myself. Why do you think the father actually himself does cocaine in the middle of the movie? Oh, like, I don't know. Again, I'm like, that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have that, ex I didn't uh, go through David's experience nor did I like adapt it. But um, I think that is, that is to exemplify how David is willing to go to any lengths to help his son, or at, least, or at the very least to understand what his son's going through. Okay, so that was the understanding you think, trying to understand. Yeah, I think so. Relate. I mean, that's I, I, I think the art takes place in the head of the audience member, but when I, that's how I understood I understood that scene, and also, um, as it alludes to what you were saying before, that I think that's kind of like what the last shot of the movie is about in many ways, where David's in close proximity to Nick because he's neither he's neither. He doesn't reach out and hug Nick, nor does he. Nor is he not there. Period. He's he's there in proximity. Uh, well, he makes sure that Son knows that he is absolutely loved. That's for sure. Exactly, exactly. I really like those flashbacks. Yeah. Um, well, to me, it was um, not only showing the father's love, where he was kind of like wondering what happened to my little boy, but to me, it was also about. I thought hinting onto what happened when he was a kid and might have created the trauma. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So that was actually really beautiful too. Mm. And I love the music in the movie. Yeah, the music is, I, I think Felix did an incredible amazing. job with that. Yeah. And that's really, that's um, inspired very closely from, from the book. Um, the, the book for those that have read it has like very strong musical references. Mm, I yeah. haven't read the book. Yeah, there's a lot of like Nirvana, a lot of stuff you see in the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the reason why I asked you about like your the, your work on the characters because uh, people who would be watching this interview, mm -hmm. some of them are aspiring actors and yeah. you're the idol, you know, so maybe a few words for them. You know, the world is your oyster and everything's a learning experience. I think I was talking about that with a, my good, like a good actor friend the other day, uh, how like even to audition is an opportunity to get in front of people and practice your craft or at the very least, even if you're in a bad headspace or something, an opportunity to learn how to act in a, in a bad headspace or to be in, in pressure cooker environment. So um, that experience is the greatest teacher, I guess. So I know that three movies are coming out in 19, 2019, correct? The King mm -hmm. Henry and uh, there's other two. Um, seems to be like very, very, very different characters mm -hmm. for you to mm -hmm. play. That just speaks to your talent and I'm really excited for you. Thank you. Yeah. So I was going to ask, what is your dream project? What, like something that at this point in your life mm -hmm. you're dreaming of playing? Maybe some favorite, favorite book or... Truthfully, it's... um. That's how I felt about it, like even my senior year in high school, which was when I was like starting to work professionally as well, was like anything good, and that could be musical theater, that could be film, that could be TV, that could be theater, period. Um, um, and to not set oneself up for failure by, you know, wanting to do things that, uh, or follow a specific path, but rather like to work with writers, directors, production designers, other actors um, that are inspiring in some way or whose work I've seen before that I've liked. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, wish you all the best of Thank luck. Thank you. Thank you. And um, you, you're doing an amazing, amazing, <laughs> inspiring job and I'm really happy for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.